Hi, I'm Tanya. I'm Lita. Welcome, Welcome to the Flash Fiction Forum. <laughs> Welcome to In Our Community. I'm Suzanne Barnett, your host, and I am so pleased to introduce my two guests who co-founded Flash Fiction Forum. Yay, yay. Okay, first we have Tanya Martin and Lita Firth. Okay, so you co-founded Yes. Flash. <laughs> fiction. F fiction forum. forum. Anyway, first of all, how did you two meet? Well, our daughters both went to the same school. And Lita happened to be teaching, offering a, a writing class. Yes, I was in the middle of my MFA program. And one thing that was a requirement was to do something that connected with the writing community. So I started with the nearest community, and it turned out to have an incredible number of great writers among the parents of um, people in my daughter's school. And so, but then how did it, your organization, how did you decide that you wanted to start this? Well, it was kind of a fun story. We both went to Utah um, to uh, uh, Alta. Writers at work. Uh, yeah. To Alta on a, on a retreat. And while we were there, um, well, I met an editor who suggested that it might help me to, as Lisha was doing, give back to the writing community. And so I started thinking, how can I do that? And, um, and I thought, oh, the, the, you know, a poetry reading? Well, there's lots of those. And so um, I thought something, you know, with more prose, like a narrative form. But and we, I, oh. Yeah, and I, and I asked Lita, and Lita wanted to do it too. And, and so how long has it been in existence? Almost three years now, three years in August. So tell us about that. Well, we looked around. First, we thought, people don't want to sit still for a 20-page story. So flash fiction, which is anywhere from a tweet to a 1,000 words, seemed like a very good uh, substitute. Uh, and then we uh, looked around for a venue, and we didn't have any income, and we really didn't want to charge for it either. So we looked around at different bars, and um, nothing was panning out. It took us over a year, and then we found this wonderful gallery in um, downtown San Jose called Works, and they agreed, they had other literary readings, and they agreed that they would give us a shot, and it has turned out to be a really wonderful win-win, because we bring a lot of people in to see the artworks in the gallery every time we have uh, so it's an event. So it's for another, you're the main venue though, right? Yeah. Um, no? It's a performance yeah. space, so there's one other main venue, I believe. Yeah, uh, there are several others, oh, several, actually. Yeah. So. How do you get your writers? From every community we intersect with. Um, my MFA program, which was up in um, Tacoma, actually had some Bay Area people. So um, I invited them to submit. And then, of course, we had the writers from the writing class I teach and our um, daughter's uh, parents. Yes. <laughs> and uh, every, uh, yeah, I put flyers up, and we've gotten people um, in cafes, and we've gotten some people who have d come in from seeing our flyer, and, and they've been looking for something like that. And you know, it reminds me of the old days where they did the coffee shop, but this is so much better organized, it sounds like. It is nice because it's, r it's a performance space, and when the readers come, they have a podium, and they, there's, there's an audience who are seated, you know, uh, very comfortably, and it's quiet so they can hear. They don't have to compete with the grinding of coffee beans or, you know, Susan, latte. <laughs> yes. <You know>? yeah. <laughs> oh, that sounds so wonderful. And we're going to get the treat. Our audience is going to get the treat of the evening 
because you're each going to read something. Do you think this would be a good time to start? Okay. Yes. Oh. Okay. Would Who wants like to go to first? Sure. Before I throw my glasses. <laughs> <laughs> this piece is called Life is a Mystery, and it is partly based on fact. She had lost the ability to make brownies, even from a mix. What would she do if she lived in the 19th century? She did the stirring right, that she knew. She measured one half cup oil, two eggs, one fourth cup water. The oven was at 350. And yet, at the end of 27 minutes, she had mush with a thin crust on top, like lava, partially hardened over an active volcano. She put it back in the oven, 10 minutes, another 15. She was sure it was done and poured melted chocolate chips over the top. When it cooled and she cut into it with a knife, it was like pudding. Back in the oven, back covered with tin foil, back at varying temperatures. In the end, the borders were like cement, the center gloppy, and she was sick of it. What could account for this disaster? There was no point talking to her husband about it. He would try to convince her that what had happened was not, by the laws of physics, possible. Her husband was a fixer of many things, but not brownies. She wished she had more time to read Russian literature and short stories. Why didn't she have time? She never watched TV, and God knows she didn't clean house. Why wasn't there more time? Because she wasted two hours making failure brownies. She poked a fork into the brownies again cut out and threw away the concrete edges and put the muddy middle into the freezer. Days later, she remembered and served it as an unusual but tasty frozen dessert. You should make this again, her husband said. She could not bring herself to say that this dessert could only happen once, like Anna Karenina jumping under the train. <laughs> Very good. Now, let me ask you just for a second, how long did that take you to write? Well, it probably went through about 10 drafts, but some of the drafts might have been very minor, you know, a change in a sentence or two or a couple words. Is that from your own experience? Uh, yes, I'm afraid so. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank you so much. Okay, Miss Tanya. Okay. I'm going to read something called Receding Tide. I imagine myself on my mother's morning walk, by her side, as she navigates bits of driftwood and stone on the silky black New Zealand sand. I match her quick pace, listening for the telltale click of her ankle, muffled by the raucous surf. The occasional jellyfish glistens in a bowl of seawater left behind by the tide. We are headed north towards the green headlands of Peter Simpson's farm sometimes dotted with groups of sheep and fringed with the remnants of native bush. We pass the cluster of festive Bahutakawa trees where Eddie, a gray-mouthed black lab, bit me years ago. As we near the old camping ground with its tall pine trees, we look out for the oyster catcher nests. We admire these magnanimous birds with their bright orange bills and legs circling protectively around their nests. If the tributary from the Akiaki is not too high, we'll cross to the rock pools where exposed mussels bask on large rocks in the morning sun. We stop and gaze out towards the distant bay of Witianga. There's a large sailing boat heading out towards Center Island, and we spot a flock of gulls circling in the sky above some hidden school of fish. Snapper, I say? Most likely cowwai, she replies. Walking back along the beach, we notice a baby blue penguin has washed up in the tangle of seaweed. My mother scoops away enough sand to bury the lost fairy penguin, leaving it to the realm of crabs rather than the scavenging gulls. We continue on in silence, occasionally looking up at the quiet windows and empty decks of holiday homes until we reach her house. As she climbs the steps to her deck, I open my eyes to reveal the surroundings of Aptos Beach in California, where I sit staring out at the receding tide 
and at the Pacific Ocean that lies between myself and my mother's morning walk. Oh, how nice. Thank you. You're welcome. How long did that take? Um, you know, I think that's actually one that I wrote in Lisa's workshop, and then I, re I revised it many times. So, yeah. Okay. Uh, one of the questions, do you think that the community is good for writers, and why? Oh, definitely. We need to hear each other's voices. Um, it kind of inspires us, and um, I think it's important that we are there to support each other, uh, to, to go to book signings for other authors, and um, just, I think, just to, read, to hear each other's work. It's kind of a myth of the, you know, the lone artist, but I think many of the artists that have been the most successful have been in a cluster, you know, like the Bloomsbury Group um, and many others. Um, for me, I like to hear what other people are doing, and that often inspires me, and it keeps me from uh, inadvertently getting into a cliché that I don't realize everybody's doing because I'm so far out of uh, paying attention. But you're a professor and you teach creative writing. What is that like? Oh, it's really <laughs> fun. It's, you know, the thing that really strikes me is there is so much talent. And that's another reason that we love having the Flash Fiction Forum. There's so many fabulous writers who are completely under the radar. Um, in our next Flash Fiction Forum, we're actually going to have a high school sophomore. And she's who, really good. <laughs> she wrote a beautiful piece. And one thing we do that's different from an open mic is we have people submit and then we curate it. And we can't oh. accept all the submissions. We try to yeah. keep a certain level of quality. Yeah. What if a person's a really lousy writer? What do you do and how do you handle that, not to destroy them? Well, we try to be, we've all been rejected. Yes. I mean, yeah. Yeah. It's hard not to be a writer and not be rejected. <laughs> yeah. yeah, oh my goodness. But well, we're kind and sometimes we'll suggest revisions. And um, well, that's a good idea. Yeah. yeah, if they're pretty close, we'll work with them. But the entertainment field, including writers, it's so difficult. How does one react to uh, objectives, objections? Well, it I helps. Mean, how do you deal with those kind of people? It helps to be realistic. Oh, you mean if people are upset about being yeah, rejected? Yeah. Well, we're very kind and encouraging. And I know from my own experience, I've uh, traded uh, work with a lot of writers. And some of their first drafts have been awful. And they've turned them into brilliant pieces, you know, 20 revisions later. So I never look at something and say, oh, this person is never going to be a writer. I would never. Uh, it's completely unpredictable because you don't know how hard people are willing to work you know, and how much they're willing to learn. Right. Now, what about either one of you? Have you ever written a book? No, I'm working on one, but it's not done. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Written, but not published. <laughs> but now you can self-publish. That's true. And you can do it online, too, I understand. I have, yeah, we have friends who have done that. Yes, yeah. quite successfully, yeah. some of them. I think the hard thing is that then you have to be your own publicity campaign, and um, you have to pretty much sell your book, and uh, it's, it's a lot of work. Yeah. It is. It is. So tell us more about your organization. Well, uh, we just added a third person to kind of help with um, editing and events coordinating. And Tanya started us off with our first pub crawl. Do you want to say that, a bit That was a lot of fun. I went around to some of the local pubs in downtown San Jose, and I asked if we could come in with um, some readers. And they were very receptive. And so we had about three different people read at, at four different pubs, and we all went with our trench coats, and we went into the, oh, it was a lot of fun. It was that a lot of fun. is so darling. How did you come up with your name? I really like the name, and I that's love a, what you did at the beginning. It, it was, was you. Yeah, yeah but, and uh, we were trying to think, well, how can we stand out? And yeah. it's, it's nice to have um, a catchy name, so it was, yeah, it was fun. And the flash means that it has to be a certain 
amount of certain, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. We try to keep it around 500 words. That keeps the, me the evening moving along at a oh, nice pace. So you need to tell the address again of of Works Gallery? Yeah. yeah. Uh, 365 South Market Street. And how often do you meet? Every other month, and but we do skip in the summer. Every so. other month, that's not very much. But you know, it's, it's a lot of work to find the writers. And we don't want to have the same people every time. So. And we want to have good work. We don't want to just have any old thing that's available. So it uh, tends to be like January, March, May, oh. August, October. Are there prizes? That would be fun. <laughs> <laughs> well, the audience is a prize. I'm yeah. working on t-shirts right now, so. <laughs> really? <laughs> so we'll have t-shirts to sell yeah, soon. That, that sounds great. So what do you envision, say, in the next three years? with your organization? Well, we would love to um, publish a best of Flash Fiction Forum. So it would be a collection of the stories that, that we really enjoyed. Mm -hmm. What a good idea that is. And then you yeah. could actually uh, make up a, a book, couldn't yes, you? Yes, yes. And, and become we'll very, very, you'll be viral on the, <laughs> on the uh, net. Right? <laughs> and we'd also like to put videos of people reading on our website. Yes. So that and tell us your website. It's uh, flashfictionforum.com. I know. I went on your website. I was very impressed. No, I really was. So okay. tell us more. Um, so the other things. Um, oh, we might mention that um, besides flash fiction, we, do, we accept flash nonfiction. And uh, we have a lot of poets who read uh, narrative, non-rhyming poems, which when spoken seem just like flash fiction. Speaking of poetry, why doesn't it rhyme anymore like it used to? Well, it, can, it still can, but I think it's just, it's a choice. It's that fashion. It's I don't a know fashion, why yeah. Literary fashions come and go. Uh, well, I get the New Yorker. I've gotten it for like 30 years. And I read their poetry, but it isn't to me, it's not poetry. I mean, it's colorful, but I expect it to, to be, you know. You know, it's a shame that, that people don't memorize yeah. poems anymore. It used to be in school, you would have to memorize. Right. Um, just as part of Everything. your English course, right? And that then, may be part of why people aren't writing it anymore. They're not reading it. I think it's easier to memorize uh, poetry when there's rhyme involved. So. Absolutely. It is. In many ways, music, song has taken over the rhyming side of, of poetry. And we do have rap. Rap is kind of... Um, oh, tell mm -hmm. us about that. Oh, well, no, I mean, we don't personally, but, it, you know, I think um, there's a lot of slam poetry that's very popular now. And so we've had at least one slam that, poem. Tanya. Slam, uh, it's it's like it's reciting poetry to a rhythm, and oh. um, how? And it's not read. It needs to be memorized. It's it, a little yes. more. Um, it, it almost sounds like a rant, you know. <laughs> Just, it's but it's a it's a wonderful form. I I really like it. And well, you know what I think is so interesting about you two women, is that this is your idea is sensational. Well, thank it you. It really is. I mean, think of people that are just so involved and passionate, and there is no place really for them to, you know, uh, perform. And this is really a performance, isn't it? Yes, yeah, it is. Yes, it is. Are the people nervous? like we are on TV. <laughs> some of the newcomers are nervous. Every now and then we have somebody who's speaking in a little tiny voice and they don't look up. <laughs> or they read it so fast that we can, <laughs> you can barely make out what they're saying. So what do you do with those kind of people? Well, I, if they're students of mine, I do my best to coach them, you know, speak much more loudly, much more slowly than feels natural. Right. Right. And oh, one thing I should yeah. mention is we draw our writers from as far away as Sonoma. Right. People are willing to drive down from Sonoma, even from Sacramento, 
We, we thought it would be a local thing. We never thought it would be regional. So people come from San Francisco and Oakland quite often. All the time, yeah. yeah. Well, that says a lot for your organization. I think that's really a hunger for stories. No. Uh, as opposed to just poetry, so wonderful as it is. How, do, how is the best method so far that's been for you to attract these uh, writers. Well, sometimes by going to other writing events, and yeah. we'll, we'll um, network with yeah. writers. What mm -hmm. do you think, Lita? Yes, and yeah. uh, some from where I teach. Usually, um, every year, a couple of my students will end up writing something so good that we'll invite them to submit. Okay, may I ask you a couple of personal questions? Tanya, you're closer right here. How did you start writing, and when and why? Well, actually, I, I actually started writing in Lita's writing class, and I just, I was always an artist before, I, you know, I, I loved to draw and, and, um, and paint, and, and um, but I thought, you know, I, I like writing, so I gave it a shot, and I, I became addicted. I loved it. And then I, became, I went, started going to uh, uh, writing retreats, and I've, I've just, I've devoted myself to it ever since. Is that a couple pieces published? Yes. No kidding. And you're a geologist by yes. profession. <laughs> yeah, but we can wear that many is, hats these that? days. You, we're no, we, nowadays, you're not stuck in one field. You right. can always put on a different hat. That's very exciting. What about your daughter? Is she a writer too? Um, I have two daughters. Uh, they 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 do like to write, uh, but one writes um, graphic novel. She so really? she likes doing that. Yes, that's interesting. Okay, Lita, how about you? When did you get started? Well, I suppose you could say it was when I won fourth prize in an essay contest when I was eleven. And fifteen dollars. That's big time. I saw that as <laughs> really? a sign from the heavens that I was <laughs> going to be a successful writer. <laughs> but I must say, many years passed before I had another success. <laughs> what happened then? Oh, I kept on writing for myself, but it took a long time to come out of the writer's closet. Um, I started with poetry, and it just felt like... Uh, it was too good of a thing to claim. Like, who am I to say I'm a writer? But um, I just kept at it. Going to conferences was really important to me. I learned so much about what's going on now, and I learned about other writers in the world. Um, and then eventually, uh, after I'd taken more classes and written a lot, I decided to get an MFA. And because I knew I needed something to keep me on schedule and doing the things I needed to do to become really um, more accomplished. Well, you know, it's so interesting because I've had so many different guests, all different kinds of artists. And to me, writing is very painful <laughs> for some reason. So I'm so fascinated as to, well, like, how do you get your ideas? Um, I always, come to you? I always have a little notebook in my purse, and I'll just, and a lot of my ideas come while I'm walking or when I first wake up in the morning, and I jot them down. And you know, writing is a discipline. You have to force yourself. You know, I have to say to myself, okay, I'm going to sit down here and I'm going to write at least 300 words, and I'm not getting up until I do that. It's the kind of thing. And then sometimes you have nothing. You just nothing in your mind, and you're just staring at a blank screen. But if, and if you just start writing the most boring, trivial thing, eventually you'll get somewhere. So that's, that's how it works for me. That's good advice. That's good advice. How about you, Lita? Well, for me, teaching writing keeps me writing because I'm always looking around, and I love to mimic other people's writing. How does that work? Well, for example, um, I recently read a poem that was about... Um, Oh, I'm trying to, oh, it said something like, choose a word, it was, this was one of the more strange prompts, but it was a lot of fun. Choose a word, make an existential statement, and then talk about how it relates to your mother or your father. And then choose another word, write another existential statement, and then tell how it relates to your mother or your father. 
And you can have a very unusual kind of experimental piece with a pattern of the three words and the three statements and the three anecdotes. So that's one of the weirder ones, <laughs> I'll say. What advice would you give? I'm going to ask each one of you because we're getting towards the end of our show. What advice would you give a budding new writer or a budding, any kind of a writer? I'd have to use the words only connect. Connect with other writers, connect with writing that's yeah. happening. So connect. Tanya, what about you? Yeah, I, I think it is, it's really important to, to have a group of people you trust and you can ch exchange work with. Um, and also I think it's, it's, it's good to experiment and just and try and find your voice and, and, and what's, what's important to you in your writing. To me, writing seems so lonely. I'm, I'm probably wrong. It, it you can be. <laughs> yeah. you know, so if a person is kind of lonely anyway, sometimes they're the best writers. I think people that are really depressed, they, you know, they're suffering. They usually turn out, to not just writing, I mean anything. It's a stupid. Uh, idea of mine, but I, I think that is true in so many cases. So writing or whatever we do should be an uplifting, wonderful experience. And I imagine it is, like with you two ladies, what you're doing. And you talk about the community. So say one last thing about the community. Oh, I love how it is a reflection of you know of where we live all the different ethnicities ages um, backgrounds of the people that come read for us so you get a real kaleidoscope view of of, of the South Bay uh, just from hearing all these different people come and read well I thank both of you I wish you continued happiness success and health and what you're doing I think is really absolutely wonderful for the community and for so many people that they're able to you know get out there and express themselves and of course I want to thank our well we have an audience today I want to thank all of you for being here that's the wonderful thing about in our community Mark loves to get an audience so, uh, and mainly, I want to thank our crew. We couldn't do this without a crew. And it's all volunteer. That's wonderful. And we get a lot out of that, it. God mm -hmm. knows. And of course, I want to thank our audience for watching, and I can't wait to see you next time. Bye-bye. Thank you. <laughs> wonderful.